ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Lower Week. Good morning, everyone. As usual, I like to start with show news. So, first of all, for those of you who haven't actually heard of it, we have a betting pool for when we're going to finish with the... Uh, when we're Basically, when the list is going to be opened up for future streams. Because right now it's in lockdown, right? So when that lockdown is lifted, that is uh, something we've got going on. Uh, we have a link to it, which I'll link in chat right now. I will, as usual, put it into the VOD down below. For anybody who hasn't voted yet, or bet yet, if you win you get to put uh, an amount towards an existing game, or you get to put a new game onto the list with some amount automatically put towards it. If you, The closer you are to the specific time, the more you get. Um, you want to hear bad luck? Me streaming PS1 games. Yes, yeah, speaking of which, next new bit of news. We're expanding the forbidden list a little bit to include Legend of Dragoon. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But we are actually expanding the Forbidden List. That's not actually a joke. Um, and as of this moment in time, uh, any PlayStation 1 game or PlayStation 2 game that is not on the PSN is now forbidden. Now, <clears throat> obviously that doesn't apply to anything that's already been grandfathered in. But that's the rule. I had reasonable certainty of being able to play PS1 games. And yesterday proved me amazingly wrong. I don't remember the last time. Actually, I do. But let's ignore that for a moment. Um, it, it has only ever happened, I'd say, once in my life where I have been that humiliated and embarrassed. I actually almost didn't upload the VOD for yesterday. The VODs. Two VODs. Because it was that terrible. So, <clears throat> not super happy about that. I actually ended up staying up late last night and finally doing something that I have been putting off for very, uh, very many reasons. But the long and the short of it is, I only have so much physical space here in this room. And so I had to move around a lot of things and reshuffle and reorganize in order to get my PS3 over there and hook the PS3 up in a permanent fashion. Uh, when we were playing through Folklore, I basically just put it on the carpet and let it sit there. Which obviously doesn't work for long term. So now we have the PS3 hooked up. And going forward, any PS1 or PS2 game will be done on that. That's the rule. I'm sick of it. <sighs> this, this is stupid. This is goddamn stupid. And I am legitimately pissed about it. So, <clears throat> if it makes you guys feel any better, uh, I have to do this. Now, if you don't understand what you're hearing, that's okay. Um, but what I have to do is I have to get back to where I was manually with no speed-ups and no cheats. <laughs> so that's what's going to be my day. Anyways. <clears throat> <sighs> Thank you very much, Ciela. Very much appreciate your sub and support. Thank you. I'll put that towards Tales from the Borderlands. Don't be, don't, 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 it's not really your guys' fault that Sony is garbage. And I'm going to say it that way. And I don't care if anyone takes it the wrong way at this point, because I'm sufficiently upset that I don't give a damn. I just... <sighs> the infrastructure of the early PlayStations are so terrible. <laughs> like, I <laughs> just... So, okay, I suppose I should share a little bit of a tidbit. You're probably thinking, well, Lore, why don't you just try that other emulator, the one that uh, Von Falkenstein was talking about, I think. And it's like, yeah, just use. The, why don't I just use that one? You're absolutely right. So last night, I used that emulator and played through the game back up to the same spot. You can probably guess what happened based on the fact that we're going to be using the PS3 from now on. So I've actually already gone through that entire section. Uh, on, uh, on 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 so I've so I've gone through where we're at and so we get into twice and I'm going to be doing it a third time today. Grandia was a Switch game. 
Crazy Norse. See, that's the thing. That's that's how this is going to be going forwards. Because plenty of PS1 games have been ported forwards. And plenty of them are on the PSN. So, that, sure. Totally cool. But anything that isn't on the PSN or otherwise has been ported forward, uh-uh. So, yeah, that's going to be the rule going forwards. Uh, I will, anytime someone wants to suggest a new PS1 or PS2 game, we're going to check, see what's available, and then... And that's going to be the rule. No, I think I can safely say the infrastructure of the PS1 and the PS2 are actually garbage max time. And the PS3, funnily enough. Now, if the PS5 is fully backwards compatible, then that's awesome. That's going to solve so many issues right there. Unfortunately, that's still the realm of speculation. All we've really heard about that is that they're going to have PS4 backwards compatibility. And even that isn't exactly you know what I would want it to be, so we'll see. Is something already off the list? No. Anything already on the list I've already committed to, and I'm just going to make it work. The good news is I actually did manage to get Legend of Dragoon on the PS3. In fact, I have it installed already. So that's there. Um, so we can in five, we're just going to cross our fingers and pray on that one. Actually, you know what? I could check something real quick. Give me a second. No, 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 no. Give me a second. Let me go save really quick here. There's no save states. <laughs> so you're hoping nothing goes wrong with the memory card, because if it does, then we are screwed. Valkyrie profile was PSP, which is fine. I don't have any issues with the PSP. I only said PS1, PS2. And I said only said those two for a reason. Okay, so hang on. Let's do this. And risk running into another crash issue later on in the game, Crazy Norse? Probably Venters. I'm still going to check every single game. I mean, I always do anyways, but we're going to be a little more strict about that. Yeah, so Weekend in 5, we're just going to pray. I'm pretty sure that's only available on PS2. And if it screws up, there's nothing I can do about that at that point, is there? Except for buy a new thing and buy a new PS2. My PS2 doesn't work anymore, by the way. I don't know if I ever mentioned that. You're probably thinking, why didn't you mention that before today? Well, I found that out last night. Alright, here we go. Legend. Okay, so we got Legend of Dragoon, Mega Man Legends, Untold Legends, Brutal Legend. I am not seeing Legend of Magaya. So that's, that'll be fun. Wonderful. Let's check Suikoden over here. No, there's Suikoden 1, 2, 3, and 4, but not 5. Cute. So yeah, we're just gonna have to pray on that one. Whatever. Sorry, I'm also in a bad mood because of something I'll be talking about today. But also, about five minutes before I hit go, I had a copy wrong strike on a Luigi's Mansion video. And I'm like, oh, great, thanks Nintendo. It's exactly what I wanted. So I checked it out. It actually wasn't Nintendo. I'm not going to tell you who it is because I don't want you to randomly Google them and they don't deserve the publishing public. They don't deserve the press. But there's this random channel, which I believe is in Japanese. I don't know. But it's it's this random channel, which near as I can tell, uh, in addition to having just little kids playing video games, has an absolutely ridiculously enormous amount of growth. And when I say ridiculous, 
I mean, they're gaining in upwards of a few million views every day. So they're the ones who decided to copy wrong strike me. Because they clearly own this one random minute where nothing significant is happening, by the way, it's not even a cutscene, of Luigi's Mansion 3. Friday, we finished Dragon Age Origins a little bit early. Yes, I challenged. Of course I challenged. Um... <laughs> Uh, and uh, some of you, some of you have probably been asking why the Lorium's page hasn't been no hazardous, uh, hasn't been updated in a while. And the answer is because it was going to take a long amount of time. And generally speaking, I don't have that kind of time to burn. Right now, last Friday, this is going to sound like complaining. I was going to take the day off and just rest, but then someone uh, once again asked about the Lorium's page. Now that's important because. Over time recently, more and more people have been asking about the Lorium's page and the fact that it hasn't been updated in a while. So I was like, you know what? Let's just deal with this. So I sat down. The Lorium's page has been updated. It took me a little over six hours. So that was pretty much most of my Friday right there. But I did get the page. It's, it's been completely overhauled from the ground up. Um, so if you're actually asking or wondering about any future um, concept or term that I tend to use on a regular basis, it is now there. And a lot more searchable, and it's got an index and all sorts of things. Also, we have added four separate commands to the bot in Twitch chat in order to pull up the Loriums page, which include Lorium, Lorium, Loriums, and Loriums, depending on how you want to spell it. So, uh, woo! <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that is going to be better for people going forwards. I am actually legitimately pleased with how it turned out. So, you know. Now... Speaking of legitimately pleased with myself, I have finished all the work it is possible for me to do on the theater right now. Now, you're probably thinking, what do you mean, Lore? What I mean is, I over the, por of the course of the last couple of months, I have been slowly working on everything I could do for the theater that didn't involve adding, uh, you know, adding lines. I have run out. I have done everything. There is no longer anything I can do to work on the theater until people send me lines. Now, that's not a complaint per se, although I would really like to get more lines. But the point is that the theater is, like, I, it's extremely done, other than the fact that I'm missing lines. Every single aspect of everything. Like, I, I could, if, if I had the lines today, I could probably start churning out the theaters next week. That, that's what I mean. All that prep work. All that uh, editing work, all the processing work, all the audio design work, all that's done. I even decided on the method I'm going to use in order to make sure that the audio is properly balanced. I'll give you a hint. It's, I'm going through manually <laughs> on a song-by-song -song basis. But it sounds good. So, speaking of other things that are changed to the website, there's two cha other changes to the website. One is on the reviews page. Something that's been requested actually several times was the uh, a total score option. Now, I've resisted that several times because that's not the point. Like, the whole point of the system is not to be 5 out of 10 or whatever, right? And I feel like the score doesn't get across all the information. But then someone made a, a legitimately good argument. Yeah, exactly, Darth Tyrone. Someone made a legitimately good argument. And they said that it should be the viewer's decision what they value with regards to the review. And I was like, you know what? You're absolutely right. So if you care about seeing the score relative to positives to negatives, you can click the link and see the actual list. If you care about just the net score, you can look at that. If you care about the total score, you can look at that. If you want to watch the video and determine to yourself, you can look at that. Basically, everything is in your hands to decide that. So we did add the total score column, if, and it is sortable, of course, if anybody wants to look at that. Another thing we added is the Lore's Interest uh, flag, which should, should be extremely obvious. If you missed it, then I've done something incredibly wrong. Um, Lore's Interest is actually a conceit that was originally designed for uh, Lore's List. So I have a separate list, which you guys haven't seen yet, although we talked about it during one stream, which I actually have right here on my spreadsheet. And it's all the games that I would like to review. Uh, obviously, none of these are on the list yet. But then someone was like, well, hang on, don't aren't any of the games on the list right now games you want to stream? And I went through, and I realized that a couple of them are, like seven or eight, something like that. So I went through and ta tagged those, and now that's now a visible thing. Because several people wanted to know the stuff that I am interested in reviewing, 
with regards to the stream. So that is now more information in your disposal with regards to that going forward, and that's just going to be a thing going going from now on. Uh, it's live. It's it's live in general, so you'll see it on the vault page as well as the main page. Oh yeah, someone asked me about this recently. They asked what's going on with the vault uh, going forward. So the ideal, the goal, is to eject the vault to no longer have it as a thing. The way it's going to probably work, and I'm still working out some of the specifics of functionality, is we're going to get to the point where there's the list on the website, and that list is never going to go above 50 numbers. So if it gets to the point where it fills up that far, it's going to be chopped off, and the list is going to go back into lockdown until it gets reduced again. Thus, there will never be a vault. Make sense? That's the general idea. I have a few ideas on how that's going to be implemented. Um... What else was I going to talk about? Uh, I talked about the PS1, PS2, betting pool, Lorium's website, website. I think that's everything for show news. Oh, yeah, and the theater, which I also talked about. Uh, I t to be clear, I never design that. Some, pe some people probably are wondering that. No, I don't. Like, as much as I would like a certain score to be a certain way, it's, it's I like the solitaire analogy I used. I can't cheat at solitaire. There's no point. If I cheat to make, you know, Dragon Age Origins have a better score than Witcher 3, then it doesn't have a better score than Witcher 3, if that makes any sense. And for me, that just, that completely defeats the point. So, I didn't design that. That was not intent. In fact, anybody who remembers the post-stream discussion remembers we gave away a couple other point pluses and a negative while we were discussing it, because you guys brought up some legitimately good points. <laughs> so... I am nevertheless amused that Dragon Age Origins managed to match... Uh, Witcher 3, in terms of overall score. But I digress. Uh, okay. So I have a few random news tidbits, and then we're going to finish up Season 3 of My Little Pony, because I could desperately use something good in my life right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, I, I'm trying really hard not to let it show, but the last couple days have been amazingly frustrating, and I have a headache right now. Alright, so... Let's talk about random news. First of all, how many of you like the Mafia series? I mean, Wondering Bard loves the Mafia series, so thank you very, very much for your interest and appreciation for the Mafia series. Thank you very, very much for the sub. Much obliged and appreciate. If you happen to know where you want to put that for increasing future priority, please let me know. So... Uh, this this kind of flew under the radar. Last week, Mafia 2 and 3 both got re-releases. I have no idea how good or bad they are. From what I understand, there's been some bugs. Pathologic 2, you got it. <laughs> Thank you, Max Tom. I appreciate it. Although I don't understand your sentence 100%. Like, you're you're here be because you're here because of my headache? What? Anyways, so uh, I remember enjoying Mafia 2 well enough, although I never actually beat it. I never played 3. I was actually told not to play 3. And after doing some looking into it, I can see why. And I never played 1 because I never got the opportunity. So 2 and 3 got re-releases, which are apparently very buggy. But that's a thing. That happened last week. That was just, boom, they're out. And they're doing what is supposed to be a remake. Now, they're calling it a remaster, but from what I've seen, the definitive edition of Mafia 1 does look like something that's actually a remake. So, you know, woo! No, no, that's not true, Max Time. I call it positivity, not positive. There's a difference. Don't make me split hairs. I'll do it. Um... So, woo, I guess. I'm not sure what I think of that. Mafia is defined by bugs. Yes. So here's another one. This is actually a fun one. I didn't even really get a chance to properly research this one. Uh, that's not true. Let's talk about something else really quick. What was the reason for voiding 3? Uh, so 3 has a really good intro. Like, really good. Awesome. And then it becomes um, the most generic Assassin's Creed game you've ever seen. And, I mean, I'm down for Assassin's Creed, but I'm talking, like, go here, unlock this, go to this random encounter, go to this random thing, go to this random thing, go to this random thing, take over this territory, go over here, unlock this thing, go this, go this, go this, go this. Yeah. 
<laughs> Not great. So if you want to play the first couple hours of Mafia 3, go for it. Yeah, the open world towers thing, which is funny, because, yeah. <clears throat> Anyways. Yeah. Um. I have some hairs here, you know. I got hairs here. That's that's what we got. So how many of you like football? Uh, soccer. I do, obviously. Uh, I've been a fan for, God, a little over a decade at this point. Um, I guess that's not really long-standing. But, you know, I, I didn't get into it for a while because it's not really that big here in the States. Which is part of the problem. And I'm going to be leading into a topic here. So, I was a fan, because you got to pick a club to watch, right? you got to pick a team, and that's your team, right? That's how that works, right? You can't just watch any football and enjoy the football match. You have to watch your team. Okay, now, see, this is kind of a topic, because... <laughs> I'm not into that kind of tribalism in general. Really, I'm not. But I can understand why some people tend to do that, regardless of, you know, regardless of tribalism. And the answer is very simple. Time. I actually know a few people personally, uh, three people personally, who picked a team and watched that team because they only have so much time in their life, right? They love football, and they want to watch football matches, whoever it is, but there's only so many hours in the day. And do you know how many freaking football matches are going on at a given point in time? So they pick a team that they happen to enjoy in order to try and limit how many matches they have, they can watch, right? So, anyways. So, that being said, here in the States, uh, the... And, yeah, and a match is 90 minutes. <laughs> There are some highlights reels that uh, some some groups put out. The Premier League actually puts out some of their own highlights reels, which is pretty nice. But anyway, I'm gonna have topic. Point being, uh, we I was a fan. The team I picked was Manchester United. You can feel free to boo or cheer as per your preference, but I want to explain that really quick because the reason I was a fan of Manchester United was because they were basically the only team I could really get matches of here in the states. Because they're that big. Because everyone's heard of Manchester United. And so for a long time, watching an actual uh, match of any other team was actually pretty hard to do. Now, that's kind of drifted away from being true over the last decade plus at this point. I think actually it's been more than a decade now that I'm thinking about it. God. Um, I'm sorry, this last, this last ten years has just flown by. It's really strange to think about. But anyways, I still think of things eight years ago as if they were relatively recent. I'm getting old. So it was the only it was the only show. It was the only team that we could get matches of. And so that's why we watched Manchester United matches. We weren't really into Manchester United, it was just that. And like I said, bit by bit it's become easier and easier to stream or otherwise grab matches, you know, that are not Manchester United matches. And so it's like, you know what? Me and my friend, uh, who are really into football, we like we decided to rip no kidding, Darth Tyrone. We decided to rip the, the Band-Aid off and say, let's go ahead and switch teams to a team we actually like. We spent some time shopping around trying to see, and we shifted over to Liverpool. So, you know, Liverpool fans. Woo, go Liverpool. Uh, they're on top right now. Not going to talk about that. But that's not why. It wasn't because Liverpool was good. I just enjoy Liverpool matches more. You know, I, I, I enjoy their play style. And I didn't like where... Well, you know what? I don't want to get into the, the thing. I didn't like where the, the team had been going with Manchester United for the last, like, five years, but... I'm getting off topic. Now, you, the, this is all just kind of preface <laughs> for something amusing that hit my news today because I still watch football news. So I'm going to give you two <clears throat> unrelated news tidbits, okay? Um, Manchester United, very recently, just last week, has announced that the coronavirus thing has cost them 28 million pounds. In completely unrelated news, Manchester United has, as of a few days ago, decided to sue the football manager video game for copyright infringement by using the club's name without licensing the club's logo. Totally unrelated. I actually did a little looking into this. This is actually even worse than it sounds on the surface. Because Manchester United has actually been cool with man with Football Manager for years. Years. 
like eight, nine years. They've actually endorsed it. And they've been doing this. That is to say, they've been using their name without the, without the logo the entirety of the existence of the game. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, by the way, there's actually another reason they're suing them. Thank you, Colin Palooza. I'll put that towards Essie. There's another reason they're suing them. This is even funnier. They're trying to make it so that Football Manager removes mods from their game. Because, here's the reasoning, modders can change things, like, for example the logo of the club. And so a modder could just go in and make a Manchester United logo and mod it into their game. So yeah. I, uh... <laughs> just... <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't laugh. This is actually horrible. I just... Oh, God. Manchester United is one of the world's most valuable and recognized brands, says Simon Mal Malinkus. The money the clubs make from licensing is very significant, and their products and services are licensed by the claimant benefit from association of the club's winning culture and its brand values. <laughs> that just... Uh... Speaking... I suppose I should jot down these news tidbits since I'm talking about this at this point. I'll put, I'll put the links in the, in the VOD description if anybody cares. Um... Yeah, let's, that's true. We should ban all modding and all creativity. Crayons are now banned because you can you can sketch a logo that's that you can sketch Mickey Mouse, and that's just unacceptable. Uh, so speaking of which, how many of you have heard about what the Copyright Office in the United States has been doing? The Copyright Office. Yes, all fan fiction has now been banned. So, uh, I'm going to link this in chat, but this is a direct download link, just as an FYI, if you choose to, to click it. It's a PDF file. And uh, it's, it's a report. It's a Section 512 report by the U.S. Copyright Office. It's a little long. It's a little long. It's about uh, 197 pages. Yeah, Leonard French uh, talked about this recently, which is actually what brought it to my attention because I do kind of keep an ear on his channel. <sighs> because he keeps an ear on a lot of uh, copyright law because that's the kind of lawyer he is. So anyways, uh, yes, Corden's project is banned. Remixes are banned. Everything's banned. I'm sorry, Cool Walker. Thank you very much, Cat Horse. Very much appreciate and obliged. Thank you. I'll put that towards Horizon Zero Dawn immediately. Actually, that's not true, Loner. The extant was already dis distinguished from the fanfiction side of things. And that's been subsumed into another thing entirely because I know I'd actually like to publish the X-Dan someday. Thank you very, very much, SJ. Very much obliged and appreciate, as always. Thank you. And do you know where you want to put that, SJ? You know, I've actually considered... If I could just get real for one second here. I've actually considered sometimes the possibility that there are people who actively just want to make the world a worse place. Like, that's their motivation. That's their goal. And I'm not saying that hyperbolically. Like, I'm, I'm not, uh... I'm not trying to be negative. I'm not trying to do whatever. I'm just... 
it has occurred to me before that there might be people who really are just that horrible, you know? Anyways, so I've kind of glanced through this and uh, the best I can. I mean, I read, I read quickly, but 200 pages is a bit much even for me. So, this is probably the saddest thing I could say lately, but I really hope the corporation wins and the, the, this piece of paperwork is just buried in the bureaucracy. Because, and, and I cannot, in, in any good conscience, I cannot say that I am unbiased here because YouTube is my job. This, this is how I exist. <laughs> this is how I have food. And, and, and electricity, you know. I kind of need <laughs> this pipeline. So, uh, a little biased. Need to be honest about that. But the long and the short of it is this, this document and this report is trying to call into question safe harbor laws, which is an, the nature by which how YouTube functions. Not that YouTube functions, only the method by which it exists. So what that would mean is, in an ideal circumstance, what the Copyright Office is recommending is that YouTube goes back to being a uh, effectively a non-curated format, I think is the simplest way to put that. Leonard French mentioned that as well. So imagine for a second if you upload, the, if you go to YouTube and there's a search bar and that's it. And that's it. That's That, that would be it. There's a search bar. And you could go to a channel or a page and you would see their videos, but every other function of the YouTube site would basically be going away. Now you're probably thinking, well, that sounds like a good thing. Yeah, that does sound like a good thing. Except for the fact that if that were to come into place, what they'd probably do is just pull the plug. So, because that would be basically destroying the overwhelming majority of YouTube's both influence, as in its ability to actually affect the viewers and market and, and, and you know... They get to decide which ads you see where. They can decide which videos you see where. They get to plug their own things. And all of that would be going away. Yeah, related videos, gone. Um, the nature of how ads would work would be completely restructured if they would exist at all. That's kind of debatable. It's a gray area. Well, basically, YouTube as a channel would be, as a, as a business, would be nuked and would be replaced by a video hosting site. And yeah, that would destroy YouTube's va value to Google. And that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we'll see. As I've said many times, I've been prepared for YouTube to either to die or to kick me off of it for a couple years now. And we have solutions already in place now in case, like, if, if tomorrow the YouTube channels just died, I would actually have the ability to keep functioning. It's just you wouldn't get to see VODs anymore. Those would be gone completely. And the ruminations would be audio only. And that would just be life going forwards. So... <laughs> we'll see. Moving on. Uh, okay, so... Have I heard of float plane? No, I actually haven't heard of that one. Would this affect Twitch? If this gets put into law, this will affect everyone online. 100%. Because this is a matter of determining how safe harbor laws work. In other words, whether or not a... So, and everything else. This this would affect... God, I don't even... I, I cannot put into to words the scope of what this would affect. This is doubly amusing, given the fact that this would only apply in the U.S. So what I clearly need is a VPN. With NordVPN! I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Anyways, I'm just going to move on from this topic. We'll see what develops. I've been following this for obvious reason because, you know, this is my job and would actually affect me. We'll see what happens. Moving on. You see why I call the MLP the positivity moment? I mean, there's several reasons I call the MLP thing the positivity thing. 
If I was hired to write Star Trek Myriad Universes, what would it be about? Uh, the Federation actually starting the Dominion War years before they did. And the consequences of that action. Anyway, so... <clears throat> yeah, I don't want to talk about MLP. I'll talk about MLP in a minute, because that we're going to get to that. Uh, what's my next topic? Uh, Justice League. How many of you watched Justice League? I suppose I'll raise my hand on that. I liked it for what it was. It's another one of those films where if I was to... It, like, if I had the power to just edit it, which I guess technically I do, um, you know, I, I, I could just edit it and remove entire portions of the film and squish it down to here, and I think it would be a much better film. <laughs> so this is funny, because people keep asking for the Snyder Cut of uh, several films, and apparently they're actually releasing the Snyder Cut of Justice League. Now... This is a weird one. Because... <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to go into full detail, but Snyder walked away from this because of real-life personal issues, which were, you know, uh, actually kind of horrible. That just You know, I, I don't want to go into it. He, he had some stuff happen, and I felt bad for them, and he just walked away from movie-making for a while in general. Um... So they and and uh, they uh, they had no plan walking into Justice League. There wasn't really a mainliner for the DC movies. Joss Whedon was pulled in because he's a comic book guy, and that's why he was brought in. Um, so the Snyder Cut uh, will be launching on uh, will be visible viewable on May twenty seventh. Now this is actually funny because you're thinking, sweet, we'll get to watch it. Well, it's. It's only going to be on HBO Max. HBO Max launches, uh, looks like this coming Wednesday. And it'll be $15 a month. So if any of you care, that's a thing. I think we're up to 12 different video services at this point in time. Streaming services. I've talked about that so many times I don't really feel the, the need to repeat myself on it. Moving on. Um, speaking of movies. Speaking of movies. How many of you guys like movies? I do. I actually really like movies. I've been a film geek since I was young, mostly because of my mom. <sighs> Is this the post? Yep. So, um... I, I, I'm stalling here because my brain is breaking. They're going to show, they're going to premiere uh, Tenet, I believe. It's the next Nolan film. I'm pretty sure it's Tenet. Uh, in in Fortnite. You know, they got that movie theater screen. The whole film is going to premiere on screens in the theaters in Fortnite. You know, on the one hand, hear me out for just a second. On the one hand, it doesn't actually say it's Tenet. Uh, I'm actually not sure if it is Tenet is the film. They, they don't say which film is going to be premiered. They just say it's a Nolan film. Whatever. Um, no, no, hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. I know that cubic skull, but they didn't say which the actual. I'm looking at the announcement right now. Christopher Nolan is bringing one of his iconic films to Fortnite game this summer for a full length full screening for his fans. That's the announcement. I'm staring at it. I'm gonna ignore Tizara for a minute so I don't lose my train of thought. 
So, uh, yeah, this, uh, here's, here's the reason I, I wanted you guys to think about this, because if this wasn't Fortnite, this wouldn't bother me. Seriously. I mean, it's possible that it could be something else that would also similarly bother me. But, uh, the fact is, like, there's, there's, there's connecting threads here. First of all, Fortnite can go to hell. Let me just go ahead and get my opinion out there. I'll go ahead and accept the loss of viewership for saying that, but it is how I legitimately feel. Screw that game. Second of all, <laughs> I mean, the game itself is actually fine. There's even lore to it and everything, and they do a lot of things right. But that game uh, represents a lot of things that I am kind of against. Not the least of which being the fact that it has such a ridiculous influence on other things. Like things outside of gaming in addition to the gaming industry itself. There's also... I don't want to get conspiracy theorist, but... I've said before and I'll say again that a lot of what Tencent does is stuff that I would do if I was trying to... You know, spread influence and actually gain a controlling... Uh, a controlling interest in the gaming industry. Which, um, you could probably understand why I find that concerning. <laughs> you know what the problem is with the dictatorship? Its, entire, its quality is entirely reliant on the dictator. So Tencent and their ridiculous level of influence is something that bothers me. Because I've researched Tencent. No, Kevin MTM. Uh, so, yeah, I, this is what bothers me about Fortnite. Its influence, its marketing practices, its, uh, its, its financial models, and the influence of its financial models on multiple industries, and, of course, the backing force of it, which is Tencent. Which, yeah, enough said on that one. Uh, no, we'll be covering Picard when it's out, Kevin. Which it's not yet. Season 2 hasn't even started yet. Um, so, no. <laughs> We're covering Enterprise and TOS next. You know, it's, it's not really my format to try and cover a TV show new. I prefer to cover a TV show when we have more information on it. And when the TV show is done. So we're going to go through Enterprise and TOS next, and then most likely what will happen is by then Discovery and Picard will be finished, and then we'll move past all that. So, Anywho, so now that I've answered two unrelated questions during this rant, my point is, like I said, if it wasn't for Fortnite, this would be the kind of thing that I would actually kind of be interested in, legitimately. Like, like, remove specifics here for a second. There's a, a random... Uh, God, I don't know. What's a good example? Let's... <laughs> we'll see, Crazy Nurse. Let's assume for a moment that... Oh, I don't know. <sighs> Let's assume there's a game like WoW, okay? It's not actually WoW. But it's a game where you can hop in and wander, run around and talk to people and it's, you know, got decent uh, design to it and it's not just a pile of garbage. And you moved in there. Alright, hang on. Cubic is calling something to question, so give me one second. So, uh, how much money are you willing to bet, Cubic? Or are you talking about you're talking about ten cent or tenant? In which case, I, we're talking about different things, because ten cent owns a fairly large. I don't actually remember how much of of Epic they own right now. They own a lot of it. If you're talking about tenant, the tenant, I have no idea how to pronounce that. Trailer premiered was premiered in Fortnite, and there's one of his iconic films is coming. I just said that. I have no idea what the actual film is. I said that on camera. Pay attention. I've lost my train of thought. Thank you, Tazara. Thank you very, 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 very much for your support. Very much obliged and appreciate. Thank you. Uh, 
Right, I was talking about the idea. What do you want those to go towards, Tizara? Yeah, sorry, that, that's why... I'm, I'm sorry. It doesn't help that we went straight from talking about Tenet to Tencent. I'm going to try to emphasize that to make it really clear. So, I apologize. Tencent. Evil Chinese Corporation. Is that is that easy? Uh, 12. Towards FMMQ. You got it, Tizara. Thank you again very, very much. Ugh, it's subliminal marketing. It makes sense. It makes sense. Imagine if there was something like WoW, except, you know, minus the content of WoW. And it was basically an online chat program, except it wasn't garbage. That's that's the sentence I was on. Because uh, there's actually online chat programs, VR chat programs, and they're all crap. But imagine if there was one that was actually good. And imagine if there was such, an, uh, such a game in which they decided to start showing movies in them. Like, they had a big old screen, and you could hop into your game, and run around and chat with people, and then watch. Of course I do, Crow of Kazir. Of course I do! Why do you think this bothers me so much? And you can watch a film in the game. That concept doesn't bother me. Not really. Now, I'm the person who likes to actually physically go to the theaters and have the experience of enjoying it in the theater with the crowd. But I know that that's, you know, that's a niche thing. We've talked about that before. It's basically a niche market. And it's getting more niche every day. And, yeah. Like, I'm down, you know? I'm down for the idea. I like... Excuse me, Chinese government. I apologize, Kvasir. Chinese government. Chinese people are cool. Anyways, um, but yeah, it's it's a cool idea, and I I would be completely down with this concept if not for the fact that it was Fortnite. Ah. <laughs> uh. Anyways. Um. Uh, so I already talked about... I, mean, I should actually move this up in the news tidbit here. Yeah, put it into other things. God damn it. EA is trying to get some brownie points, which I'm not actually sure what I think of. Uh, let's see if I can find the specific post about that. Here we go. Here we go. So, uh, there's Command & Conquer Remastered. That's coming out at some point. Um... They're... Here, I'll go ahead and give you the, the, the post here. They're going to be releasing some of the source code. I don't know if they're releasing all the source code. Hang on, let me grab this. This is actually probably a better thing to showcase that. Um, that would be funny, Sierra Mike. Um, but yeah, they're, they're going to be re releasing the source code for Command & Conquer, and they're going to be using uh, mod support. They're going to include the map editor, and they're going to have open source DLLs to help people to mod... So basically, they're going full mod support with CNC Remaster. Like I said, brownie points. <laughs> Still good. I mean, you know, despite the fact that they're doing this for, you know, those kind of reasons, this is still a good move. I'm still down with that. It's it's, it's free publicity, and it means that, you know, that's going to be awesome, at least hypothetically awesome going forward. I'm still very curious how CNC Remaster is actually going to come out. Like, as in the quality of it, how, how good it's actually going to be when it comes out. So. It has been weird, Hazardous, I agree. They also have... Before, lest you think too much, they also have two special editions which you can buy. Which you can only buy through them, of course. Uh, hang on, what do we got here? So, t -t 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 -t. Uh... There's a crystal, a Tiberium crystal, which has a USB thing on it, which contains the remastered control, or OST, excuse me. A reversible poster, uh, pins that come with enamel pins for some reason. Uh, tech tree prints for some reason. And a faction sticker sheet. Also, um, there's the, the aforementioned stuff, but there's also a, a beanie. Which has, like, on one side it has GDI and the other side it has the nod, it looks like. If I'm looking at this correctly, it's a very small picture. 
Uh, there's a small metal mammoth replica and a painted PVC light and sound Tesla coil and obelisk. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, thank you very, very much, Silence J23. Very much appreciate your support. Thank you. Uh, well, you don't like stickers? Um, what do I think? Oh, it's putting towards Steeler's Choice. You got it. Thank you again, sir. Oh, for the low, low price of it. Actually, the price wasn't listed. I was going to tell you the price. The price was not actually listed here. So I don't know. Hang on. Maybe, maybe if I click the link to buy it, it'll tell me. Give me a second. I would like to buy this. Let's see how much this costs. Right, Pre-order now. What do we got? What do we got? No, I need the, the collector's edition. Where's the collector's edition? Apparently June 5th is when it comes out, by the way. Nope, nope. I need to know the price. Hang on. Okay, so it's at limited... What the hell? Limitedrungames.com is apparently where I can buy this thing. There we go, okay. It's 150 bucks. They're sold out, consequently. It was 150 bucks. I was, I was looking up the collector's edition, Nymph. Twitter is unrolling a new feature. Uh, this is... I... I'm not sure what I think about this. Probably never, Microsoft. As long as I can keep not missing them. Uh, so... Okay, let me just go ahead and start by saying I'm not a typical Twitter user. I use Twitter for announcements, and that's basically it. I don't tweet. I am not a Twitter user, effectively. So Twitter's re re unrolling this new concept where the only people who can respond to your post are people that you tag. In other words, you know, like if I was some gargantuan corporation and I decided to release an announcement post... No one can respond to that post. Unless I tag them. So, while I can hypothetically see why that's a bad thing, from a, from a purely corporate perspective, that actually makes perfect sense to me. Really. For the same reason that I make sure and watch every single comment that comes into my YouTube channel. Just on the off chance that someone decides to, you know, post some spam or, you know, like ASCII dick pictures or completely spoil something, you know, in an unrelated video or whatever. You know, I, it's obvious, right? But the problem here is that sounds like it's going to be a little bit too easy for, for normal people, for non-companies in order to look at that and be like, yeah, I'm going to post, um, <clears throat> episode one, one totally sucks. You know, that's it. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure what I think of this. I'm not sure what I think of this option. Yeah, of course it's going to be abused because of course it freaking is. It's Twitter. But I, I'm not really sure what I think of this. Now, that would not surprise me cutely if they went that direction with it. But yeah, it's a pre-delete. It's a pre-delete of comments. See, the problem I have with that is, like I say, I manually go through my comments. That's that's my moderation. I can do that because I, I'm not that big. But uh, I don't think I would like to ever get to the point where I just turn off every comment on every video I push out. That's a toggle. I can do that. I, I can just... 
set an option on the channel to just disallow comments forever. I've considered doing it, not because comments are bad, but as a defense against YouTube and their terrible policies. Let's not get into that right now. But, like, that sounds like a terrible decision, effectively, you know? Like that's, that's just shutting down the conversation. I don't know. This is just a weird thing that they're doing, and I don't really know what to think of it. Oh, um. Yeah, my... Basically, this what what's really making me raise an eyebrow is what's going to happen next. Like, what's after this? It does happen pretty frequently, yes, Cyber Exile. I usually don't talk about it because, you know, I don't feel like the plug it up. Uh, so, it's almost the end of May. I need to shut down the Patreon post. Um, but starting, looks like, in about two weeks... More information is going to go live. We're going to have a game festival on June 11th. There's some cyberpunk news. I have no idea what that is. Um, EA is going to be doing their... What was supposed to be E3 on June 11th as well. And they're going to show off uh, an indie dev thing on June 22nd. So we'll see where that's going. Oh yeah, Ghost of Tsushima got a trailer. I haven't had a chance to watch the whole thing because I don't have time in my life. But, I mean, from what I've seen, it looks cool, and it's already a funded run, so it's happening regardless. Valorant is apparently happening. I don't really care. Uh, Cute Crucible is also a thing. That that one I'm kind of that one I'm kind of watching. Uh, you're probably thinking, who cares? What's Crucible, and why do you care? Crucible is a game made by Amazon. That's the only reason it's even significant to me. It's it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Um, I think that's it my notes wouldn't surprise me crazy norse but we'll see disintegration i i no i have not heard about that why did i decide to stop doing lore runs actually that decision was made years ago tuxedo brian but i hadn't quite finished all the games that i could lore run yet but now we're done we finished all the games i could lore run we did it we made it Lore runs were always a finite uh, category. Like, there's only so much I can lore run. Like, I, I can't do a lore run on... Uh, what's a good example? <sighs> Dark Souls. You know, I couldn't do a lore run in Dark Souls, for example. Uh, nothing you want to hear, Grit Source. <laughs> am I going to change my name? No. I still cover lore, and I still am a runner. Regardless of lore runs being discontinued. I'm not going to call myself the premier runner or the classic runner because both are the same thing anyways. <laughs> there, prob there might be some things I could lore run in the future. But as of the moment, the only lore run that's on the books at all for any time in the future whatsoever is the Metroid pseudo lore run. I don't even have plans to consider to c cover the rest of BFA, Rebelto. Uh, maybe Pika? Probably not, though. Now, Red Dead Redemption? No. So, although I do have the PS3 hooked up now, changed my setup. Look, Arkengia, he died. Nobody cares him, about him. Why do I say Dark Souls isn't compatible for Lauren? Because I don't know Dark Souls lore. A lore run is when I sit and really play through the game and try to discuss the in-depth lore and gameplay of the game as thoroughly and, uh, and, and as fully as I can. I do a ton of back work and research and preparation in trying to figure out everything I can about it, both from a behind-the-scenes perspective and far as how things can be perceived or stated or whatever. In short, the only thing I can ever lore run is something that I am fluent in, something I know well enough to be able to lore run. Make sense? If I was to lore run Dark Souls, all I'd do is make a fool of myself constantly as I constantly say the wrong things and screw up the lore. Because I don't know it that well. Something about dragons, you know? I don't know. <laughs> Absolutely, SA2K. Skyward Sword is only on the forbidden list because it causes me physical pain to play it. I mean, Dark Souls is, a, is just the first example that occurred to me. But I was just bringing it up because that is a game that has a fairly large amount of lore and plenty of stuff to talk about. 
that I could not talk about in depth. I can only give you what I have read or researched, and that's it. So, have I played Bloodborne? No. Unfortunately, I will be playing Bloodborne sometime in the future. So. <laughs> that's true. I wouldn't be able to cheat in Dark Souls, which, as we all know, is basically mandatory for uh, for a lore run, with very few exceptions. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. Um, I uh, God, I am. I'm gonna go ahead and chop off local recording.